Just kidding. <laughs> I wouldn't play. I wouldn't play the whole few. <laughs> hey guys, how's it going? Um, welcome. We're uh, here live right now, and um, from my living room. As some of you may have already seen before, uh, this is where I usually do most of my live streams. And today we're here, uh, coming at you uh, on the Violin Channel, and as well as on my own homepage uh, on Facebook, Facebook Live. Here we go. Uh, it's a. Uh, it's, it's, you know, my, actually I haven't done a Facebook Live in a long time, so cheers to that. Um, and hope you are all uh, safe and healthy and happy. And uh, yeah, that music is, is with you always. So mm. um, we have a bunch of questions that we're going to be answering here. And uh, I see them on my phone already. Wow, popping in. All right. From... Uh, Violin Channel, Suzanne Restall says, uh, what strings do you use, please? Ah, well, so the strings that I use are actually, unfortunately, not on the market. They're tester strings, uh, from, but they're from the brand uh, uh, Tomastic. So um, they make other sets like Dominant or uh, Peter and Felt. Those are a couple of those uh, of their of their strings that they make, um, string sets among among others. Um, but you know, I I get pretty nerdy when it comes to uh, testing strings and getting into the sound. I even I keep a string diary, so I write down all the dates of when my uh, when I change my strings. I also keep a bow rehair diary. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's uh, that's what I like to do. Um, and so yeah, these ones aren't aren't out on the market yet, yet. So who knows, maybe they will be. We'll have to wait and find out. Um, all right, uh, Byron Klimek from Violent Channel also asks, what kind of shoulder rest are you using? Ah, that's the secret, secret of the sound. Well, this shoulder rest, uh, I designed it, so I'm, uh, you know, it may come out on Ray Chen Plus. Uh, that's my uh, kind of collaborations uh, and merch page, so uh, I have a, Page where you know shirts like these are available for sale, hoodies and as well. And you know we're slowly going to go into accessories, uh, and this shoulder rest may uh, make an appearance on there uh, one of these days. So uh, also let's see. Um, Maria asked from Violent Channel, uh, if you could eat dinner with anyone you wish, dead or alive, who would you choose and why? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, if it was someone dead, I would. I would love to have dinner. Hmm. Well, I don't know if language is language a barrier. Would language kind of be uh, something that you know I wouldn't be able to? I don't know. Like if 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 let's say you know I wanted to speak with uh, someone like Debussy and I couldn't speak French, would would that be an issue? Uh, oh gosh. Um, or like <laughs> people like that. Uh, I suppose you know. Or like. Beethoven, you know, I wouldn't really be able to converse with him properly. But if 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 language weren't a problem, I would love to just have dinner with Beethoven, just to see what he was like in person, and just to be like shout at him and be like, "What? You can't hear me?" <laughs> I think that would be like pretty pretty fun. And then of course to like be able to play music with him. I mean, I would be one of those, you know, I'd be like me back at like high school, like being like bringing my violin along, you're sitting in the presence of someone great and you're like, excuse me, can I, Mr. Beethoven, could I please play for you? <laughs> like, that would be me. That would, 100%. Uh, so, yeah, I would love to meet Beethoven. Yeah, what a, what a, what a revolutionary uh, mind in person. Uh, let's see. Andrew Cluxton from uh, from my page from uh, Ray Chen. How do you determine the underlying pulse in these dances? Oh, uh, you mean like in Bach, for example, probably when you prefer to a flexible pulse to emphasize the feels over a more constant approach? Huh, that's a good question. I think that for me, you know, you've got rhythm. You've got kind of like what what rhythm is comprised of. Let's see. Uh, I don't know in a dance like. Uh, in a, even in a saraband. Actually, that's probably that's probably a difficult example to give. But let's say the gavotte and rondo. So it's kind of like obviously it's in time. Rhythm and structure is very important. 
if, if you've ever seen dancers, it's like they're all about structure and rhythm. However, when we kind of, so you have to start from that. That's, that's the baseline. But then as a musician, you kind of get as, as the, like, you get to bend that. And that's where magic and music happens. When you create, when you bend the line, you create illusions in the music. That's why rhythm is so important because rhythm is gravity. But without gravity, music wouldn't make sense. Things would just be floating in the air. It would be like a Gaudi painting without any, it would be, it, I mean, I suppose in certain contexts that would be cool, but a Gaudi painting, you know, looks cool because everything else is not. So that's something for you to think about, like what the balance of that is and knowing when to take these breaths in these dances. I mean, in any music. So, uh, from Jessica from Violin Channel, how long have you lived in Philly? Oh, how long have I lived in Philly? Hmm, I've lived here for quite a long time. Uh, I first moved here to study in the United States uh, at the Curtis Institute of Music. And then I, uh, I grew up in Australia. So I moved here in, oh, it's been 15 years actually. Oh my gosh, I've lived here like half my life. <laughs> yep, that's, uh, that's been a while. Um, Emma asks, what kind of secret society would you like to start? Um, well, I don't know about if like there's any particular secret society that I would, I would like to start, but um, recently we've uh, I've sort of put together um, a bunch of people like a, a, on a Discord server and we've, it's not, I mean, it's not a secret society, it's invitation only, but you know, I've made the link pretty accessible for those who wish to find it. Um, but inside we, this Discord server, we have uh, just a whole community of about uh, 5,000 people who are active. It's like a, a bit like an online chat room, and you can have voice channels as well, so you can talk to people. But we've made these voice channels into practice rooms, virtual practice rooms. So we've listed them like practice room 1 through 12. And people go in there. Some people like to practice for people because it gives you an incentive, and other people just like to listen to people practicing. So this is the perfect place uh, for, you know, people to be grouped together. I think that that's, uh, that would be my closest thing to having a secret society or a, a members club right now. Um, okay. Let's see if we have, um, <laughs> wow. Um, from my channel, Aaron Emmerich Weiland says, what do you eat before a concert to keep up your great energy? Well, to be honest, before a concert, the secret, of course, it's a banana, but before that, I would say it's a shower. Taking a shower before that totally just resets the day. Without that shower, I feel like, you know, it would be like a nice, like hot shower. I used to take cold showers all the time and uh, then the winter came and then, you know, I was just like, oh, I better keep my immune system going. And I couldn't tell if my immune system was getting better or worse from taking these cold showers. So. Just decided to uh, stick to the hot ones for now. Uh, again, from uh, my channel, uh, Chloe Kuypers says, any advice for adult beginners? Things to look out for, traps to avoid. Ooh, well, I would say the thing about when you're learning something when you're a kid versus learning something when you're an adult is that when you're an adult, you rely more and more on experience because you have it, it makes sense, right? But when you're a kid, everything is sort of, you know, up in the air. You know, a, a part of you knows that you don't know anything and you're less stubborn when it comes to learning things. I think as an adult, we, in order to save time, we, we don't have time to just, I mean, well, perhaps, except for right now, this may be the very reset that we, we, we need, but still, it's like, People as adults were like sitting around being like, what, what do I do? But this is a, you know, think about when you're three years old. This is a three years old, three years old life. So, you know, it's like this is their life every day. If you took that same approach towards learning the violin and was kind to yourself, was patient to yourself, uh, wasn't too harsh on yourself and was able to have persistence and discipline. I think that's very important as well. Um, having like a parent or a... You know, somebody there just reminding you. Um, 
and actually listening to them because and taking it for like what it was and not being like, no, I have more important things to do. Um, then yeah, that, that, so you have to somehow simulate that environment as well. So that would be the, well, the trap not to fall into would be that as an adult beginner, it would be not to be grow impatient, I would say, and to always keep having fun. Yeah. Um, Bernard asks, is there a language that you wish to learn? Um, is there a language that I wish to learn? Uh, besides the musical language of all the composers, because each composer has a different language. I don't mean their spoken language. I mean like the way like Shostakovich has his language and, and Beethoven and, and Mozart each have their individual way of speaking within the music. Um, a, I suppose that occupies most of my time. Um, now I'm learning the language of of internet. I feel like uh, recently I've been uh, diving head first into streaming, so that's been a fun thing. But um, you see, I'm kind of avoiding the question here. Is there a language? Well, I, I tried German. It's, uh, yeah, ich kann sprechen ein bisschen. We're just going to leave it at that. <laughs> oh. Okay, from Violin Channel, Rafat says, asks, why do you raise your middle finger when you play? Ah, good question. I'm very, very kind of perceptive. Well, I think you're referring to my right hand. I don't always raise it. If I'm playing something loud, you know, then it's, then it's pretty much down. But if I'm, you know, uh... Here, like this part. This is important to keep the weight off of the bow because I use a Russian, like a very Russian grip. So the Russian grip is basically where the normal grip is like this. You put your finger like this and the first finger, that is the middle, that, that part, but the Russian bow grip goes like this. So it's very like, you can see the, the, the hand is much more like a spade, I suppose. So, but then what happens is you lose one joint, I suppose, of flexibility. So then it becomes more locked and it also puts more weight on the bow itself. So uh, it's good to then take weight off. But the only way that I suppose I intrinsically feel taking weight off is, is just lifting this finger. So... Especially at the frog. To be able to do those kinds of smooth bow changes, otherwise it would just kind of, you'd kind of feel awkward if you have too much weight on your bow. Oh, all right. We have, wow, we have so many questions. <laughs> Brittany asks, toilet paper over or under? Well, of course over. What kind of savage are you to have an, like, like there is only one way. <laughs> um, Lee asks, what social media platform do you spend the most time on? Uh, I spend the most time on probably Instagram and nowadays YouTube. Because, um, you know, I've just, with streaming, it's uh, something that, it makes people, I mean, you have to spend more time on it and people spend more time on it, but people also grow closer to you. And it's very interactive as we are doing right now. You know, this is kind of a, an example. Um, so, uh, <laughs> um, George from Violin Channel asks, is there a reason you rarely perform the Tchaikovsky or Brahms Violin Concertos? Um, I wouldn't say that I rarely do it because, but I, I see what you mean. I think it's because that those concertos are often performed by other artists. So oftentimes as a soloist, as a young soloist, you get asked to these orchestras, uh, the, especially you know, the really big ones, the important ones. And you go there and you're like, okay, so what would you like me to play? And they're like, you're like, can I play Brahms or Tchaikovsky? And this is like early on. I don't mean like right now. I mean like 10 years ago when I first got started. And uh, so you either do, you either play Tchaikovsky a lot, especially that's a very young soloistic 
concerto. But then Brahms, it's kind of like you do that later, and you definitely don't want to get into the danger zone of playing Beethoven because people judge you hard for that. Um, so, <laughs> so it's like you you, and then you might. By the time you know five years pass, you're like, okay, I'm ready to play some Brahms. But then it's just like, oh no, 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 um, you know, uh, and Sophie Motor is playing Brahms, um, and uh, and you're like, oh, oh, okay, or like, you're what about Sibelius? It's like, oh no, uh, so and so is playing Sibelius. You're like, oh, what about um, you know? And so the list kind of goes on, and because at the, I feel like the older artists they tend to, they have the, uh, they they tend to stick to like two or three concertos per season, and they just only play those two concertos. Whereas as a young artist, you have to hop around a bit more, um, which I suppose is, you know, obviously there's good and bad to both, to, to that. Um, you learn to adapt much more um, and learn things quicker, but, um, you know, it would be nice to, you know, play a, a, like, just two concertos for the whole season. Mm, I would, I would like that a lot. <laughs> so, um, Oh, what we have here? Oh, we have another question. Back to the Russian bow grip uh, by Matt. What made you go with the Russian bow grip? Um, I wanted. It's all about the sound, always. For me, you know, all of my musical choices. When I do the shoulder rest, when I test the strings, when I keep a bow rehair diary, it's always for the sound. And sound is what makes music, music. You know, so that's as simple as it gets. For me. It felt, I like to joke, it's one, it's one step, you know, from, from here to here, like that, just that little bit of difference from your finger, that's already one bit closer to your heart. I mean, that sounds cheesy, but it's true. I mean, and to a point, point when you just feel like, you know, um, just, it's, it's, it's uh, closer. <laughs> Just, I don't know, maybe it's the awkward, slightly awkward yet position of it. Just kind of brings the sound in a bit more. Yeah, anyway, I think it's, it's something special. It's definitely for the sound, though. <laughs> Alexis asks, what nicknames have people created for you? Well, Alexis, uh, I don't know where, 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 if you've seen the recent things uh, lately, but people have been... Call me all sorts of names. Uh, no, I've been called, you know, Ray Bay. I've been called uh, Bendy Boy. Uh, there was a concert where I was like really, you know, getting not up there on the E string, and I was like, like that. And so, you know, there was a Bendy Boy meme. Um, most recently, I've been called Boomer Ray uh, because uh, I tend to make uh, uh, have difficulty in struggling uh, a lot with technology. So. Um, I mean, streaming is difficult. It's it really is to to be able to to you know go from here to let's say oh you wanna you wanna look at your music to be able to do that and then to go come back again you know like stuff like that. It's just it's it's tough. You gotta all do it all at the same time. Yeah, it 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 really is tough. So so stuff like that makes me um, I had a, a steep learning curve. <laughs> um, okay, what did you say to your Teachers, Isabel says, what did you say to your teachers when you didn't practice? Oh boy, uh, I didn't say anything. I just kind of played and hoped that they wouldn't know that I didn't practice. No, it was, um, I was always pretty good. I had, uh, you know, a lot of sort of, I, I had pretty good, I would say, discipline and also help from my mom. Uh, my parents, of course, Asian parents, right? That's that. That's one thing. But they're actually pretty relaxed as Asian parents because my sister, for example, I have a younger sister. She uh, is not a violinist. She's not a professional violinist. When we were kids, I'd be like, oh, I don't like every kid. Like, I mean, I've met a few kids who like to practice, but 
I was one of those who would prefer to play video games. So I would be like, oh, mom, I don't want to practice. And she'd be like, okay, that's okay. Just just quit the violin. Just don't don't play anymore. And I'd be like, oh, no, I can't possibly. And so she'd be like, uh, yeah, that's what I thought. And um, But when she tried to do the same thing to my sister, my sister being six and a half young, years younger was kind of like, yeah, okay, thanks. I'll stop practicing. I'll quit. And my mom was like, oh, nanny? <laughs> like, kind of like, what? How could you? Um, so they, yeah. So, but my sister is now a doctor. So, you know, thank you, Jennifer, for fighting coronavirus on the front lines. You know, she works in a hospital in Brisbane. So, you know, I'm constantly thinking of her and wishing, and of course, all of our healthcare workers on the front lines as well, wishing them, you know, safety and, and, and good health. Thank you for all that you do. Um, let's see, uh, a few more questions. What do we have? Uh, Jessica asks, favorite clothing brand? Um, wow, uh, I, well, of course, the Ray Chen <laughs> um, Ray Chen Plus, merch plug line, bam. Uh, but uh, I kind of shop at like three places when I do. It's Uniqlo, um, Massimo Dutti, and which is like more kind of like uh, smart casual. And then for my formal stuff, I go with Giorgio Armani. So those are the three places. Uh, I go shopping like maybe once a year. So, you know, don't, I'm not, I'm not like a fashion inclined person at all. Um, why is your video quality so good? I mean, <laughs> this is from QB. Uh, I mean, the live stream compared to others. Well, uh, it's because I use external devices. I'm not using a smartphone. So, you know, there's, there's a capability to, to do stuff like this, to like be able to have autofocus. And I invest in, you know, like microphones. So that's why the sound is also pretty good. Um, that's, that's, that's something that I think, you know, that's a personal choice. I've always liked social media. So, you know, the, for me, it's important as an artist, I wanna be, represented in the best way possible you know i don't want my art to go out there through like i mean it's fine it's it's fine if you if you if that's the best you got you work with what you have right but i don't i feel like if i have the capability i want it to be clear and so i'm using external stuff like a like a sony camera and then yeah some nice mics and stuff but um you know that's 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 why <laughs> daniel asks favorite ice cream flavor Oh, well, <laughs> I um, would say that I'm really into the, like the butter maple pecan, that, that, that sort of, I know that there's like, you know, you can have like, you can get into the walnut, blah, 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 but like that kind of flavor profile, I'm really into. Like a little bit of salted caramel, not when it's overdone though, but like uh, with that kind of mixed in, that's, oh, that's so good. <laughs> Um, so, <laughs> whoa, so, uh, Lucia, um, asked from Violin Channel, which 20th century violinist do you admire the most? I, uh, would say David Oistrakh. He's my favorite. I mean, he just, my favorite video of him is him playing this, uh, Debussy, Claire de Lune for violin and piano. It's been transcribed. And the way he does it, I mean, I'm not even going to demonstrate, but it's just like his fingers are so like... You know, it has this like quality where, I mean, for me, I have such skinny fingers, you know, my, my fingers, I mean, luckily violin, you don't have to move much. So when you just move like, that's already a half step or a semitone. So, you know, that's okay, but. It's just like, that's, there's something, when he does it, it's something really special. And so I always think of David Oistrakh when I, when I'm, when I'm playing that piece, the, the Debussy Clary Loom. Um, from, uh, so the reason I was laughing before was Leah, Leah Tousset Bay from Violent Channel asks, uh, still want to know your pinky length? Well, I mean, that's, 
I don't know, but uh, I will say that my left hand is considerably bigger than my right hand. You know, it, it's 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 really strange because when I compare the two, so this is this is my left, and when I put them two together, this is this applies to all violins, by the way. Look how much bigger like this hand is over here. It's like the the thumb length is the same, but then the finger the finger is is like. It's so much, so much, so much like longer, the, the whole palm. So, you know, I have, a, I have a decently sized pinky and I'm able to reach into those, those tenths. So thank you, thank you, mom and dad. <laughs> so, okay, the last three questions. We got time for three more questions. All right. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, if I laugh, I suppose I have to read out the question. Um, even though I, I would like to skip it. Um, so Betty asks from my channel, why are you so handsome? You never take a bad photo. That is so not true. Are you kidding me? Betty, where have you been? Have you been on my Instagram? Because that's where all the bad photos are. Maybe that's why. I try to keep things different on different platforms, by the way. I think that's pretty important um, because each platform has a different sort of, um, different type of audience. We all know like, Facebook is for older people. I myself use Facebook, uh, hence that's why we're here. And but um, also, you know, like Instagram, and then there's TikTok, and then uh, you know, I mean, YouTube streaming, Twitch, you, you know, you name it, TikTok. Uh, like I already said, TikTok, Snapchat. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah. So that's um, you got to head over to the uh, the kind of more um, interesting platforms where you will see many a bad photo. <laughs> okay, two more questions left. Um, oh, this is a good one. Greta asked from Violent Channel, can you tell us about a bad performance and how you felt with the insecurities after? Hmm, very good. Um, very important. I think this applies to a lot of people. Well, I've uh, definitely, definitely encountered a bunch of bad performances. There, that's, you know, but what to me feels bad and what feels bad for other people, that's, that's already a different difference. So you, even, even though, even when you're not at a high level, it is different too. But as you get higher and higher, the, 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 yeah, it, it's like what people will be like, well, what are you talking about? That was a great performance. Especially when you think about the fact that people are, most people in the audiences, they're not, there to critique you they're just there to and if you are one of those people then shame on you no they're there to enjoy music they're there to be encouraging i mean classical music i know sometimes can be a negative sort of space but for the most part i would say that um and this is where your personal sort of relationship with you yourself and the instrument can you basically your stage presence that's what i'm saying is very important. People can alter how they perceive a performance just from the way you walk onto the stage. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's true. A person who looks really arrogant is gonna make you think, okay, let's see what he or she has. Come on, show us. Um, and then if it's like, okay, great, well, then you're, you're kind of doubling down on the people being impressed. Uh, but, you know, there's a risk to that. If you walk on, like, confident, but a little bit shy. Uh, there's kind of like an instant warmth. It's like, okay, the audience wants to support you. Um, and so back to your question, uh, those are some psychological tips I that wanted you to share with you. Um, back to your question about how did it make me feel? Well, it, of course, bad performances have made me feel bad, but I usually just immediately think, okay, what can I do better? Right? Like all the competitions that I didn't win, that I didn't get past the first round. I, I always instantly, I was disappointed for about half a day and then I would just pick myself up and be like, okay, tomorrow, tomorrow I'm going to be, or a full day of disappointment. Tomorrow I'm gonna really just back to it. I'll only allow myself to feel sorry for myself for a day. And of course, you know, you, the, it goes on, but then I quickly turn that into the fuel for fire, for what keeps, you know, all of that hard work burning. So yeah, thank you. Thank you for that question. That was really insightful. Um, okay, 
I think this is the last question, guys. So I'm going to choose a good one. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. mm. Last one is... Oh. Okay. Maria says, what's a good habit you'd like to start? Well, I would like... I would like to start the day every day with like this is something that I've started doing during this quarantine period is starting every day with music basically turning on my speakers and just playing anything could be classical could be you know pop lo-fi chill hip-hop um, beats anything just just starting the day and seeing how music really like now that I have this space to myself, feeling what music, what the impact is to you. How does it change your day? Um, to me, it's more of an experiment, I suppose. But I've noticed that no matter what the music, I mean, maybe except for, uh, you know, heavy metal, you know, kind of screaming music, I would say that for the most part, it's like, yeah, it gets you, get, gets you going. It inspires you. So uh, I would say start your day off with inspiration would be the best habit to, to have. Anyway, I think that that's all we have time for. So, you know, thank you so much for joining me on this live stream. And for those of you who want, you know, more live streaming from me, you can go over, check out my YouTube channel. Um, you just type in Ray Chen Violin into YouTube. And you're also welcome to join us on the Discord server where you can practice in those virtual practice rooms and uh, just have a, you know, talk music with everybody. Um, yeah, so anyway, thank you so much and thank you to Violin Channel for hosting this uh, AMA. So bye for now.